And we're back. My first time doing a Zoom interview. I got my boy back by popular demand, Mr. Brian Holtzman. How are you, sir? Can you hear me? <laughs> See? I, I, I think you're messing with me, man. <laughs> I think you're messing with me because I'm already like, did I send the link right? Did I do the right invite? He does this all the time. I think he calls his family back home on the East Coast. Oh, dude. Don't make me... <laughs> I think I'm doing this right. Can you? Oh, are you pretending to talk and you're just moving your lips? Oh, man. Okay, for the visual people, that's what he's doing. Okay. Hello. I don't know how to get out of this because there's nothing I can do to fix. I'm not a technical guy. Oh, I know. Oh, I probably muted you. Maybe I muted you. Did I mute you? No. What's going on there? Unmute. Oh, unmute. Unmute. There you go. That Can was my fault. That? Yes. You look great. You look very refreshed. How is the drive? How is the family? Great. Thank you. Oh, this whole time I thought you were goofing on me. But that was my own fault. It was your fault, my friend. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> Thank you. I do look refreshed. Look at me, man. I got, I, uh, you made a comment last time about my T-shirt, so today I'm wearing a collar. Oh, look at that. Huh? Put a collar on. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. It's funny, the last time I wore this shirt in public, uh, somebody said I look like a high school football coach. So I, and what are you it's drinking? Kirtland, what do you got there? Kirtland uh, sparkling water, lime. Nice. Yeah. A little lime there. Whenever I do a podcast on Zoom, yeah. I always want to keep lubricated. You don't want to start a podcast with Darren Carter, the party starter, without the proper lubrication, especially during a car coronavirus ec uh, ec uh, pandemic. You almost said epidemic, but it's pandemic. Yeah, pandemic. I got my coffee. I'm caffeinated. So what's new? You must be dying to get back on stage. I am, man. It is. Is there something about – it's been – Three weeks, I believe, for me, and be, before I played a, a room full of people. You know, it's 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 weird, right? It's like we're superheroes, and then without that, we're just we're, we don't feel like we've got our we got our superhero powers taken away a little bit. Perhaps I still feel like a superhero, though. You know, like when I see people, I still give them the smile and the hi, how are you, and the you know. We've got to be the leaders in this situation, you know. Like as far as bringing for me, I think bringing a little bit of cheer and joy. That's right. You got to stay happy. You got to stay healthy. You got to stay safe. You got to keep your marbles together. Yep. A lot of people are very frightened and they're scared financially and uh, uh, physically. And uh, you just got to uh, hang in there. You know, you just got to hang yeah. in there. No hey, something happened with the sound right now. I don't know what that was. Oh, maybe you covered the speaker. Or the microphone? No, no, it's just uh, sometimes your, uh, I guess your internet service will, will, will become strong or become weaker, you know. Oh, okay. A lot of people are on Zoom now. A lot of people are online, and uh, that's, what, uh, that's what the problem is. That's okay. <laughs> 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 well, Mr. Holtzman, what do you got? You got some items of interest? People love to hear the items of interest. Yes, I brought some items of interest, and I also brought another letter. Oh, boy. <laughs> another apology <laughs> letter of sorts, you know that. <laughs> Brian was in the Air Force, and he, he has a big file of letters he received before the Air Force, during the Air Force, and after the Air Force, and occasionally he shares a letter with us. Right. Uh, well, I'll just uh, you want me to just go ahead and read some items of interest? Yeah, read an item of interest. Please do. Is that By the okay? way, yes, and you're the very. This is the very first time I've done a podcast uh, using Zoom. You're. This is exciting. You're the first Zoom. one. Zoom. Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the U.S. plastic industries is using the pandemic. Uh, pandemic to try to undo bans on single-use plastic bags. Eight states and several cities, cities have banned or restricted plastic bags. The industry now blames the bans for encouraging Americans to bring germ-filled reusable bags 
into retail establishments and is calling bag bans a public safety risk. I don't know about that. We've got to get rid of plastic in the in the environment, and I think this is just an excuse of the plastic lobby uh, to put a monkey wrench in that in that uh, endeavor. So uh, I wouldn't trust anything, you know, in a real world situation. If you found something that couldn't be recycled and was harming the planet, the ideal condition would be to stop manufacturing it. But of course, that's not going to happen in a capitalist-based uh, uh, system that we have here in the United States. Do you uh, prefer, news that, do you, let me ask you: Do you prefer paper or plastic when it comes to paper or plastic? I like paper, knowing that what the plastic does that's going to be around for two thousand years. You don't feel as guilty. And hell, paper. We don't need trees. What do we need trees for? Right? What do we need, <laughs> what do we need oxygen for? Yeah, yeah. Paper, 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 paper. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you I can't love trees, man. I, I was walking out in the rain the other day, and it was raining, and, and when I and I had an umbrella, and when I got under a tree, I put the umbrella down, and the, the tree kept me dry. It was, a, it was a great afternoon. When was this? Two days ago. No, yesterday. Yesterday. Up in Bakersfield? Yep, north of Bakersfield. It was raining, and I, and I went for a little walk to get some fresh air, and Man, it really, mean, really, you really appreciate a tree when you, when you, when, when it's. Raining. I love trees. The trees, trees are only good when they're in the ground. As soon as you cut them down, and you try to make uh, uh, lumber, uh, I mean, you, it has to be painted. It has to be stained. The termites eat it. It warps. It, it, it <laughs> deteriorates. It rots. You know, wood is only good on the tree. Once you cut the tree down and try to use that wood. <laughs> yeah. I got you, man. <laughs> got you. I really are you laughing at me, Darren? Darren, are you laughing at me now? No, are I'm you laughing. mocking me? I'm laughing. You, ah, I've never been mocked before. I've been mocked before, but never on Zoom. Are you mocking me right now? <laughs> I can just hit a button and just end this whole thing right well, now. I'm laughing because I'm sitting on a wooden chair and I have a wooden table and I kind of appreciate wood, you know, but I, I, can, see <laughs> I can see a point. Though. I got another uh, cameo uh, request. You did? Yes, some gentleman from Australia. Yeah. He wants I me to I wish you look up Brian Holtzman and. Uh, you could pay to get a nice little message from him. You could pay to get a nice message from Darren Carter. We're both on there. A lot of celebrities are on there. And I turned Brian on to it. And uh, it's pretty fun. You know, I actually wished a dog happy birthday on Zoom. And I, oh, I want to give a shout out to um, Alex Bernstein and his wife. They hired me and I cheered them up and did a little comedy over the, over the cameo. What was how your many, Yeah. How many minutes were you on there? How, how long was yours? Oh, uh, for that one, I think I, it was around, it might have been about three minutes. Very good. Yeah. I don't really go for the length on those. I just try to get the message and then make them happy, throw in some zingers, and then move on. <clears throat> the New York City Department of Health issued an adversary, adversary uh, recommending a masturbation during the pandemic. You are your safest sex partner, the department noted. So feel free to rub one out, I guess. <laughs> You're doing it for your country, man. You're doing it for your country. By the way, uh, it's, it's old headshot event this week. It's old headshot event. I got an, an old headshot. And uh, if anybody, out, any ladies out there want to rub one out to this, check this headshot out. Hey, Whoa. here we go. Nice. Here we go. That's Darren Carter with some hair. I know. Dude, that looks super funny. Look at that. The way it's peeking at you. Like, hey. Hey, now. Hey, now. <laughs> I'm wearing a collar. <laughs> yeah. You got to bring out one of your old headshots <laughs> one of these days. Yeah, you're looking at it. <laughs> Uh, the news that staff of the New York City's Bronx Zoo are uh, <coughs> donning full protective gear during the pandemic. Given the genetic similarities between apes and humans, 
and the possibility of viral, uh, viral transmission between the two species. So even zookeepers are getting full gob, gab, full protection. Yeah, and you know that tiger got coronavirus. I saw that tiger did. I don't believe that. I think that could be a, a one-off on that Tiger King show. Yeah, I think so, right? They're trying to, like, push the tiger, push it, push it, you know? I'm surprised Tiger Woods isn't going to do an appearance. You know, that show taught me a lot. I watched the whole thing, and I think we should uh, divert some of the money from the wall and just build a wall around Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. Just let all the tigers loose and eat everybody in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you can see you can see Brian at the Looney Bin at the Oklahoma City <laughs> when this pandemic is over. <laughs> the Federal uh, Emergency Management Agency added uh, uh, a coronavirus rumor control page to its website. Visitors are informed that FEMA does not have military personnel, and this thus incapable of imposing martial law and that there are currently no magic cures or treatments for the coronavirus rumor control i think that's important to get the right information out a lot of people are uh people like you i bet you tell a lot of stories right oh yeah i'm like you know what you gotta do man you know and i heard i heard you gotta use mouthwash and uh because the germs like to live in your mouth for like four days and then you got to have some hot cocoa. And, and you got to uh, smell the smell the uh, vagulence of. Uh, yep, yep. Got to smell some of that vagulence of. Uh, you know, you pick an animal. You know, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say tiger, but I ain't getting close to that man. <laughs> I am not getting close to no tiger. Wow. But yeah, people, you, yeah, guys, listen. Here's here's the biggest thing for coronavirus. I was thinking about this, like. Go to a reputable source. Don't just, my friend heard this, or I saw on Facebook, or my, 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 my aunt is a nurse, and her friend, you just, just go to the source. Otherwise, you'll be believing a million things, you know? Right. That's all I got. Well, that's enough. That's it, man. Reputable source, keep your distance, wash your hands, be careful about touching your face, then you won't be afraid. A uh, uh, Britain's uh, Daily Man warned uh, Daily Mail warned warned woman that going braless for weeks while quarantined at home could damage Cooper's uh, ligament and cause breast to sag permanently. Wow, this pandemic's worse than I thought. Seems like oh. a terrible, terrible thing to do. Nobody wants saggy breasts. Uh, I didn't know there was such thing as a, a, a Cooper's ligament. I didn't either. You don't have to ask your wife about that. Hey, you know what? Do you stay dressed? <laughs> I know, right? Hey, honey. Yeah. Hey, let me. Hey, do you stay dressed around the house normally? Always. Yeah. You, you really you do. Know who's going to come over? You know, they could come over with the check. They could come over with the check and say, I won the, the uh, Clearinghouse Publishers Clearinghouse $10 million. You know, I want to be ready. You don't know who's going to come in the house, you know? You yeah, want to yeah. yeah. Oklahoma, okay? This is California. <laughs> That's true. Because I, I generally am wearing boxers and maybe like a pair of shorts. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then And then I might wear a shirt of companies around, but... Other than, I'm not one of those people that's like, you know, fully dressed all the time, you know, around the house. I mean, I'm not naked. I'm not gross. But I'm like, you know, boxers, shorts, and a, usually a T-shirt if I'm in mixed company. Maybe some of your listeners are wondering where I am right now. This is the video and audio uh, studio in my home. So I, 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 I have it all soundproofed in uh, – I can uh, do all my uh, uh, correspondence from here, and the acoustics are just unbelievable. Just unbelievable. You can hear a pin drop if you really listen, and it falls on the floor. If it falls on the carpet, <laughs> you won't hear a damn thing. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what? A, a classic stand-up comedy line I heard, and I don't know who came up with it, but this comedian was bombing on stage, and he goes, 
wow, it's so quiet in here, you could hear a career drop. <laughs> <laughs> I love classic comedy. <laughs> you sure do. You sure do. So uh, we'll see you tomorrow in Burbank. <laughs> yeah, baby. You yeah. owe me that dollar. You still That's have right. a Venmo. <laughs> This has been an exciting time. I've signed up for Zoom and Venmo. Like, oh, and another thing, Linktree or TreeLink. I think it's called TreeLink. Is that uh, like a Venmo? No, I'll tell you all about it tomorrow, but it'll be helpful to you. You know, if you have lots of places you would like people to go, your YouTube channel, your podcast, your this, your that, one place, you, they click it and it takes them to all the links. Back to items of interest with Brian Holtzman. Here's one from Germany for our German listeners. The epicenter of Germany's coronavirus outbreak is going to become an open air laboratory to help scientists determine the germ is transmitted in daily life, how it's transmitted in daily, uh, daily life without fueling its spread. A district of 250,000 near the Dutch border is Germany's worst hit location with more than 100, uh, over 1,000 uh, infections. So uh, they're going to see if they can't figure out how it's going, how it's being spread, and what, what they're doing. Good luck to them, you know. Good luck. Well, if anybody can solve this, uh, this uh, quagmire, it's the Germans. Uh, the Lufthansa Airlines, Germans, uh, they have people, you know, that watch the people, that watch the people fix the airplanes. That's Germany. Wow. You can set your watch at 3 p.m. in Los Angeles and look up at the sky and see Lufthansa taking off like clockwork, like a train. Those Germans are unbelievable. <clears throat> Yeah, they're good with the cars too, right? Like they got well, not so much. Cars. They're good. They're good with some cars. They're not good with BMWs. Oh, really? I thought they were great with Mercedes and BMW. BMWs are over-engineered. They're very, 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 you know, uh, sensitive. They need constant maintenance. The motorcycles are a are a horror. A horror. Have you ever, you know, by any chance, just a random question? Have you ever been on the autobahn in Germany? No, I haven't been to Germany. I, I haven't either. And I, I wonder what that would be like to be on the Autobahn just going super fast. I went to Alpine Village during Oktoberfest. What was that like? It was like being in Germany without the Autobahn. <laughs> and the engineering. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a resourceful Dutch hairdresser had doggedly continued plying a trade despite the pandemic pandemic by employing an improvisational umbrella as a makeshift protective device. The crafty stylist cut two holes in the umbrella for her arms and another two to allow her to see. But while it appears that the contraption may have afforded the stylist a level of protection, it has made cutting clients' hair for more challenging. This is not going well, she can be heard saying in a new viral video of her labors posted on Facebook. New York City photographer practicing social distance has initiated an unlikely romance with the assistance of a drone. Wow. Jeremy Cohen said he saw a cute brunette dancing on the rooftop of a nearby building. He waved, and when she waved back, he taped his phone number to the aerial device and flew it to her. Mm. Since then, he and uh, the woman have been texting quite often and are making plans to go out to dinner after the coronavirus ends. So nice. I was like, oh, my God, a girl. I haven't seen one in so long. So he's happy. Everybody's happy. Yeah, you know, there's some good that comes out of it. And by the way, let me ask you about that haircut situation. I'm lucky. Uh, I guess I'm lucky. I didn't know I was lucky when I started balding. And uh, I said, you know what? I'm just going to get some clippers. And I started cutting my own hair about three years ago. And it's like the best move I've ever had because I used to go every week because 
Otherwise, the hair would grow weird on the sides. I didn't want that Larry David Kirby enthusiasm look. And especially when right. it's red, I might look like Bozo. So I started cutting my own hair. Do you Have you had a haircut lately? And if so, how do you do it? No, I haven't. I called Chinatown, and uh, the woman said, no haircut, no haircut, no haircut. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, I haven't. So I just have to wait it out. How much do they charge you for a haircut? I'm curious. I don't even know the price. Nine dollars. Nine dollars. Oh, that's good. And they Nine do a nice good. job, in my opinion. Nine dollars. Yeah. That's good. When I stopped getting haircuts, I think it was about nineteen dollars, and uh, and then my son, Austin A. Carter, he got a haircut, and uh, I think I went there with my wife, and they'd already they'd, in the short time. That I stopped getting haircuts, the price had already gone up over twenty-five dollars, and I was like, "Wow!" You know, which I know people can pay even more for haircuts, but I just I thought that was a, quite a jump in haircut price. Oh yeah, twenty-five, twenty bucks plus a five or six, seven dollar tip. You're you're looking at thirty-five dollars. Yeah, I go down to nine dollars. I get my hair cut. I don't even have to listen to what they're saying because I don't know what they're saying. You know? <laughs> That's the best. I don't have to wait. I don't have to wait. I just walk in, and they take me right away. That's great. I cannot sit and watch other people get their hair cut. Oh, I know. That's a nice little help, helpful hint from Brian Holtzman. Here's, uh, here's an interesting uh, 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 item of interest. This is, what, this is about uh, Dwight Yoakam. You know Dwight Yoakam? Oh, I love him. He's got a great voice. I'm a thousand miles from nowhere. Yeah, a wonderful, wonderful honky tonk uh, musician and, and vocalist, and he's also a dynamite actor. I saw him in a movie once. He yeah. played the bad guy. I forget the uh, with Jody Foster, I think. Uh, I forget the name of the movie. Oh, was it that one where Panic he was, was it Sling Blade? Panic Room. Oh, okay. I gotta watch that. Uh, I know. What he does a, yeah, I was gonna say real quick. He, he does a duet with Buck Owens, and it's called "The Streets of Bakersfield." Right. He's uh, Dwight Yoakam has uh, Appalachian in his blood and his music said so and so and so and so. At first, every country music executive balked at the Kentucky's native self-described hillbilly music. But Yoakam's modern spin on honky tonk became a 1980 uh, juggernaut. He had the first country video on MTV and had sold 25 million records. Wow. It was an uphill fight. Yoakam, 63, was born in what he calls hardcore Appalachia, Pike County, Kentucky, and drove his orange VW Super Beetle to Los Angeles in the 70s in search of musical fame. He landed at a country music bar patronized by bikers and meth dealers, winning a following with his upbeat version of country and moved to larger venues when the audience came for punk rock main acts. There was a risk rule release for us on stage, he says. Human beings respond to that independent of gender. Gender. Uh, gender. Uh, gender. Right. Before long, he had a record deal and a blossoming career. Oh, this is what I like, Darren. Listen to this. Are you listening to this, Darren? Yeah, tell me, tell me. This is a great line. Yeah. He says, uh, where does he say? Uh, it's funny how you, here it is. He says, art is a seed. He says, some things are fast bearing and other plants are slow growth. Oh, I like that. But they become the redwood forest, the sequoias, or the aspen. Don't dismiss the thing that takes longer to germinate. So what does that make, Yoakum? I'm probably just dandelions, he says. I go with the wind. <laughs> he was probably being self-deprecating at the end, but that's really good what he said. I like that. Yeah. A lot of times people in show business, when they make it, they uh, they want the audience and the public in general to, to feel that this was some kind of overnight success. 
Yeah. They do. I remember when I moved to Hollywood, they, uh, I had a manager and he's like, what have you, uh, how long have you been doing comedy? And at that time I've been doing comedy for six years. And he's like, how about we say six months? And uh, we say that you worked at a deli and uh, you came here from Nebraska. And, uh, and it was all, it was just BS. And by the way, I think it froze. Are you there? Oh, there, there you are. Okay, cool. Yeah, my, I got a little note that said my internet, internet is unstable. So I guess we're going to run into that from time to time. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it does, it's, it's not, it's not an overnight thing, man. It, it's a long, it's a long time and a lot of perseverance. And sometimes we coast because things are going good. But in times like this, you realize like you got to keep doing, you know, the work even when, when things aren't, you know, coasting. And I think his internet froze again. Um, Brian, just jump in there. If, uh, if it unfreezes, um, yeah, I'm looking at. Uh, I wonder what his what Dwight Yoakam's MTV song was back then. I got. I looked it up on my phone. Do you think it might have been like "I'm a Honky Tonk Man" or could have been his "Baby I'm as Fast as You"? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it was. I'd be guessing on that. Yeah, I, I'd guess too. It, it could have been, uh, been the dog died and you left me. <laughs> it might have been like some of those. Uh, it could have been possibly those Elvis covers. He covered Elvis like "Little Sister, Little Sister, Don't You Yo." Little sister, don't you do me like your big sister done. Wow. You know, that's something else. You've got that twang in your voice, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting on Zoom in my bedroom. <laughs> my computer was slow. You got a little bit of redneck in you, huh? Yeah, it wasn't stable. As I sat on my wooden table. And Brian looked at me without a clue. <laughs> He gets his hair cut in Chinatown. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear some more items of interest, Darren? Yeah, give, give us some more items of interest. I love this. Don't tell New York or Pennsylvania, but America's drive-in movie theaters might be enjoying a rebirth. Ooh. Said so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And I'm telling you, they used to make fun of me when I moved to San Francisco area. I had a friend. He was like, oh, you're from, you're from the San Joaquin Valley. That's where they have drive-in movie theaters. Cut to 25 years later, drive-ins are making a comeback. Across much of the country, operators of the throwback outdoor cinemas are either opening early for the season or re uh, reporting up to twice as many ticket sales uh, as the corona uh, coronavirus outbreak has shut it indoor theaters and other gathering places. After all, seeing a movie at a drive-in can require little to no human contact, uh, largely because patrons are, of course, confined to their cars during the showing. But while many of America's 305 remaining drivings have reasons to hope for a big summer ahead. Yeah. Wow, that's good news for an old bygone. I mean, yeah, I, I just hope that they keep the, this, you know, they care about their movies. Because I remember I saw Gremlins in a movie theater, or in a, in a drive through And like the light bulbs weren't very bright. And so you're watching this dimly lit movie, and it's a dark movie and it, a lot of it took place at night and it was just hard to see you know i felt like like the old drive-in theater that they didn't have to keep their equipment right do you happen to remember the last movie you saw in a drive-in i've never been to a drive-in theater oh wow i um yeah see you're from a big city you know out in you know fresno we used to when growing up we'd go to the drive-in and then on Saturdays, uh, during the day, they turned the drive-in, that whole property, that would be a swap meet. So people could, could walk around, and, and it was a swap meet. You ever been to a swap meet? <laughs> no. But, uh, yes, I've been to a swap meet. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, can buy, you can buy caskets at a swap meet. Dang, can you? They have one here in Los Angeles at an old drive-in uh, theater place. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, wow. The one yeah, the one right off the five, probably. Yeah. Wow. Did you you didn't you didn't shop for a casket there, did you? Or you just no? Uh, I just looked. Oh wow! You just just browsing, were you? <laughs> <Just> browsing. 
<laughs> for that something, one friend, you don't know what to buy them. Something interesting about a casket, you know? Yeah. Hey, one time I was at the big Fresno fair and they had a, you spin the wheel. And one of the prizes was, a, was I swear to God, it was along those lines. It said one single grave. Wow. I know. It's like, I would, who wants to win that, you know? And when this Pam, when this, when, when everybody can go out again and this thing is all over, I think the comedy clubs are going to be packed to the rafters. I think, I so. think people yeah. are going to go nuts. They're going to be nuts. They're going to, they're not going to be able to fit everybody inside that wants to go see a comedy show. Oh my gosh. People are going to be starved for that, 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 that that feeling before the show starts. I get it when I go to see a play. Yeah. That, that nervous feeling you get in your stomach as an audience member before the show starts, you know, and, and then the show starts and it's like, wow, it's live. There's nothing like live. You know what I mean? There's nothing, nothing like, like live. live. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing like it. It's like there's other forms of entertainment, but when you're seeing a live show, you don't know what is going to happen. You have no idea. And uh, especially a comic like you, you know, you're just, you, you think like other, you don't think like other people. You know, one time I saw you do a list of all these uh, places you were going to appear. And it just, I was like, how does he, how does he have that list? Like, you know, I want to, you know, I'll be at that, whatever you said, it was hilarious. Like the, the tickle rib in Fort Worth, uh, Arkansas, or whatever. I mean, you just went on and on and on. And it was, an, it's an incredible. Johnny's list. Laugh Box in Middle, 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 Middleton, South Carolina. You know, you know, <laughs> May May's Laugh Chuckle House in, in, in Port Maine, Alabama. And, oh, my God. You know, they just, you know, yeah, I'm going to get on a plane and fly there. <laughs> Sign me up. Sign me up. <laughs> Give me the middle seat. Give me the middle seat, too. I want to sit in the middle between two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when's your next gig? What do you got planned? You got anything? Well, how does it all work? Is everything you had in the future gone? I mean, uh, I don't know, know, right? Like I was supposed to be shooting a special. They said we don't. Even back then, they were like, we don't know the date. It might be in the summer. Obviously, that's probably going to be pushed back. But as long as you know these people that b believe in you before, they're gonna. I think they're gonna continue to believe in you and. And maybe even you know give you more more of a break because you know they they know we're all in this together, right? I covered up my face on on the uh, on his. It's distracting to look at your face while you're talking. Yeah, you know your face on Zoom. If you don't know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, your face comes up on the right hand corner while I'm talking to Darren. And so, I, know, I covered that with a piece of paper. Oh, I put it for me. I put it like we're side by side, so I'm seeing you side by side. I prefer that. Is that how your your view is? No, I'm just talking to you. I put you on the single view. Oh, that's good. I'm not doing side to side because I don't want to see myself. It's it, it's disturbing to talk to somebody while you're looking at yourself, even if the picture's small. You know, it takes away. You can't just not look at yourself because it's it. You know. So I covered mine with a piece of paper. That's how I did. So now I don't have to see that. You know, that hard I, feel, I feel the same way when I'm at a restaurant and, uh, and there's a mirror and I'm facing the mirror. I don't want to watch myself eat. You know, I don't want there to be a mirror right in front of me. Right. It's like in the gym. When I pump iron in the gym, I shatter all the windows before I start working out. So <laughs> I eat myself. Yeah, and you act like it's an accident. You're like, oh, sorry, the dumbbell was um, extra hard right there. <laughs> One time I was in Okinawa. During that time I was in the Air Force, and I was in a dojo, a dojo that had been many, many years old. It could have been 100 years old. You know, it was just, you could tell it was old. And like a jerk, I leaned up. We were doing that martial arts with the sticks or some nonsense. <clears throat> I think I went yeah. to one class. I never went back. And I leaned back against the mirror, the full-length mirror, and it cracked. Oh. <laughs> hey. Did you slip away from it like it wasn't your fault? Oh, no. <laughs> it made a big sound. Everybody knew it was me, and I thought they were going to club me to death. But uh, oh, no. seven years I, bad luck. Too. I never went back. Yeah, more like 25 in my case. But, <laughs> Hey, well, that twenty fifth year is it's 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 coming up in May, so you'll be fine after this. But uh, uh, you got any more items of interest? 
Yeah, I'm just going to go along and look at a few uh, jails across the country uh, are releasing low-level offenders uh, for fear of a cor uh, cor uh, coronavirus outbreak among prisoners. In Los Angeles County, authorities released one in ten prisoners, including prostitutes, vandals, and shoplifters. Wow. Let wow. the prostitutes go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, you should be hanging around the exits of jails. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Rides, anybody? Rides? Rides, anybody? <laughs> hey, do you work for Uber? I don't have my license on me. <laughs> <laughs> The cancellation of the NCAA <coughs> men's basketball tournament, which generates 75% of the organization's annual revenue, has forced the association to slash its annual uh, 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 scholarship program to colleges to $225 million. It used to be $600 million. Mm. Oh, this is gonna. This coronavirus is just affecting everybody. People that are graduating, uh, people. You, I don't think there's anybody on the planet that's not being affected by this coronavirus. I mean, everybody. You know, it's funny how they get the commercials up real quick. Yeah, Darren, how, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do they get the commercials up real quick? I know. I saw. I thought. I saw that. It's like, do they? Do they somehow, some of them are pre-taped and they just add a voiceover? I don't know what they're doing. How do they get those people together to make those new commercials real quick? Like I saw one, it was for a, a fitness place and it said, it said workout. It said, so 8, 8 a.m. tomorrow, let's all work in together. It said work out, work in. We're going to work in together. You know what I've been doing? I, I've, I've got to be honest though. Like I've, uh, you know, I, I've had a lot of, I have a lot of books. And I'm like, I'm going to read those books. And I never read the books. And now I'm reading the books. Now I'm actually, I'm enjoying it. I'm putting on the reading glasses. I'm, at lunchtime, I, I read like three or four pages. I have a pen and I'm, and I'm circling paragraphs I like. I'm actually really enjoying it. It's a, it's a lost art to read a book because we get so distracted when it's on a device. Like you might start to read on your device, at least I do. And then all of a sudden I get a notification. Oh, what's this? And then I'm not reading a book anymore. Yeah, you really have to take the time to read a book. What I'll do is I'll try to knock off a few chapters. This way I'm not, I'm dividing my time between the television or the movie. Yeah. And because uh, reading is, uh, you'll never miss a movie. You'll never really miss a movie. But you'll always miss a good book. I mean, you'll miss a good book so terribly that you'll reread it. That's how good it was. And that's how terribly you miss it. And, and you ever get to the end of a book and you just, you're at a loss. You're at a loss because you get to know the characters so well. You feel somehow there's a vacuum. You know, I have an interesting experience uh, with the book I'm reading now. It's, uh, it's about the history of comedy. I think it's called like Drunks, Thieves, and Scoundrels, The History of Comedy um, by Cliff Nesteroff. And it's covering like the right now I'm at the chat. I'm, I'm at the part of the book where they're covering like vaudeville and, and, and burlesque and what it was like performing during, get this, the depression, you know, the 1920s, right after their, you know, the pandemic of 1918, I believe. And, and I thought, how can this apply to us? And I realized like uh, there was all these theaters and they'd show up. This is during the depression. And there'd be like 12 people in the audience, but they said the people that were thriving, the comedians that were doing really well, were the ones that were doing radio because they could do radio, they could be funny, entertaining, interesting. And people have been listening to this storytelling for, for that ain't going away. You know, as long as you can, you know, because you have to do other things with your eyes and you can still listen. And, and I thought that's great that, you know, like we can learn that lesson, like to continue to do the podcasting and doing what we're doing when we're not able to do those live shows. And yeah, then, yeah, the only thing we have. And what I was going to say real quick is they were talking about um, a, car uh, a comedian. His name is Harry Einstein. He has four boys, and two of them are in show business. One of them just passed away. Um, he was uh, Super Dave Osborne, who was also a character on Curb Your Enthusiasm. 
Well, I know Super Dave. Yeah. Yes. So, so real funny. Their father um, was uh, he did a character called uh, Kick something like Kicky or Carcass or Parker your oh Parker your Carcass played a, like a Greek character Parker your Carcass, and that that poor guy he he actually died on stage like he was doing a friar's roast he said thank you good night he was crushing in front of Desi Arnaz Lucy the whole all these big stars he goes to sit down and he had I guess what was an, a massive heart attack and passed away but. They they play they talk they describe the clip like that he's killing and uh, I was able to re I'm reading this book and then I thought I wonder if it's if it's online somewhere and I googled it and I found it on YouTube and, and you can hear his set really so that kind of, it makes the book kind of alive you know interesting so you listened to the gentleman's last performance I did it was good I'll so send you this. I guess he really killed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was well, like, like to say, he died doing what he loved. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, they said that his son, he hated to hear that. Because people would be like, you know, your dad died what he did. Well, apparently his father was really, I think, only 54 years old. And, and uh, he'd be like, a line that he would say is, is, is your mom a housewife? Does she wash the dishes? Well, how about if somebody clubbed her over the head? You know, did she die when she <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. This is, a, this is a band aid that when I'm not doing a Zoom, uh, you know, with my family back east and what have you, I put this band aid right here. Oh, smart. Otherwise, the camera, you feel like it may just pop on and, and people... Well, I've, I've read things where they can look at you or spy on you. Or I don't know whether it's true or not, but how much? How long does it take to just put a Band-Aid on here? Now, do you see me now? Do you yeah, see me? One, yeah, I don't see you at all, actually. Right. I'm going to take it off. <laughs> hey, hey, you gotta you gotta make make our listeners feel good. Uh please tell us that's a clean band-aid. Oh yes, that's an unused band-aid that I took fresh from the package and used it just uh uh specifically uh for this uh this Okay. Thing. You weren't like, no, nah, I was down by our swimming pool. It was just floating <laughs> on the water. <laughs> Chlorine, man, it disinfects. <laughs> Wholesale prices for Midwest Lodge eggs hit an all-time high this week at three oh nine per dozen. Nice. This is up from uh, one oh three per dozen only three weeks ago. So the price of eggs are going way up. I guess the coronavirus is cutting down on some of the uh, roosters and the chickens and what goes on with them. <laughs> what do you think came first, the egg or the chicken? I don't know. That's, if you you could, it's one of those things you can really think about it. Like you, probably the chicken, because you need a chicken to lay an egg. It, I don't know. It's weird. Why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? Say why? Say why did the chicken cross the road? Oh, okay. Take two. Why did why the chicken, did the chicken cross, the road? cross the road? I'll I'll start off by asking you. Okay. Why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know. Why did the chicken cross the road? It's none of your business. It's none of your business why the chicken crossed the road. None of your business. Why do you care why the chicken crossed the road? <laughs> <laughs> I got one for you, all right? This is, a, this is a, a good, clean joke. Hey, Brian, did you hear about the new restaurant across town that just opened up? It's called Karma. Really? No, I haven't. Yeah, you don't. You don't have a menu. They don't give you a menu because you get what you deserve. Oh, where's that Band-Aid? Where's that Band-Aid? <laughs> Time for an old headshot. <laughs> well, we better wrap it up. Uh, we've got a few more minutes. And uh, did you say you, like you, to, you want me to read my letter? Yeah, read your letter. By the way, for you guys watching on YouTube, you can uh, find this podcast called Pocket Party on iTunes and Spotify and Stitcher. Please subscribe. 
And uh, Brian has a podcast called Dead Air with Brian Holtzman, and he does items of interest and uh, a lot of interesting items. And I've been lucky enough to uh, to be a sidekick on there from time to time, and I really enjoy all my appearances on that. Dead Air with Brian Holtzman. This is a letter from an acting school in Los Angeles. Dear Brian, under the terms of your contract with the studio, you are only permitted to miss class for acting, extreme illness, or for a family medical emergency. You have missed classes for reasons which are considered unexcused. Therefore, you will be put on probation for one month beginning December 7th, 1994, and continuing through February 18th, 1995. <laughs> the terms of your probation are that you cannot be late to class or a private, miss a class or private, or cancel a rehearsal with your partner, or you will be dismissed from the studio. Well, I found out that I was dismissed from the studio. <laughs> do you, uh, I was going to ask you, or go, do, keep, continue, continue. Nice. This is to the Joanne Barron D.W. Brown studio. I would like to take this time to say how regretful and sorry I am for the most unfortunate and deplorable phone message I left on your machine and the uncomfortable situation that caused. My I'd actions like were- that. I'd like to hear that message somehow. <laughs> <laughs> My actions were totally out of line and I deeply apologize for them. The employees of the jo jo Joanne Brown, DW Brown studio have always treated me wonderfully and I hope they will forgive me for my outbursts. Furthermore, I would like to apologize to you, Joanne. You have done nothing but good things for me and have helped me a great deal in my career. <laughs> I did say some things that were not true and I am sorry for you. Joanne, I guess when I found out on March 8th, 1985, after giving so-and-so and so-and-so $100, that I was no longer in the school, and that I was not going to have my private lesson that day was the straw that broke the camel's back. I would not have come to school that day with $100 in my hand had I known I was dismissed from school. I thought we had an understanding. I was, in fact, very wrong. Not being able to pay for school is one thing, but paying late, I think, is a different story. I did speak with the so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so about this more than once. Well, Joanne, I guess the only good thing that may come out of this situation is perhaps you will review your policy concerning the way in which you collect school tuition in certain areas. So maybe what happened to me will not happen to another student in the future. Policy change or not, I will press on. I do take full responsibility for my actions and make no excuses for them. What it did not, what I did was not professional, or for that matter, very mature. Sincerely, Brian Holtzman. It was bullshit. It was total <laughs> bullshit. Did you say 94 or 84? 94. 94. And that was it, and they just let, they let you go. Didn't get to graduate. That was year two. Mm-hmm. They should have called it the acting school for rich kids. Yeah. Total bullshit. So I got on the phone when I got home that day. I had a little bit to drink. I was upset. And I left a message on their machine. And I let them know exactly what I thought about their school, their policy, their personality, their tuition fees, and every other damn thing. And they said they had recorded it. And they will send it to the police if they have to for prosecution. Whoa. So I called them back and said, so and 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 so. 
and after all that, did they did they say you were on a one month probation? Or they were like, "That's it, man. You're out of here." No, out. Oh. I always find it funny with acting classes that I think they'll just keep taking your money as long as you keep showing up. Uh, and there's because there's not, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like it's a you're getting like, like a union member. They'll yeah, keep yeah. as long as you keep showing up. <laughs> right, you keep showing up month after month, year after year. They're like, oh right, you know, and and but but I think but I, and also there's such a demand, you know, especially back then, ninety four. They could kick you out, and there's ten more people willing to pay him money, and they're just like, well, let's just let's just get this new student who's not going to leave messages. Right. You know, it's all BS, right? Like I remember, like I I. I I talked to a guy, I don't know if you know Jimmy Brogan. He actually, he asked, Jimmy Brogan, he used to be on The Tonight Show. He used to have his own sitcom, man. This guy had his own sitcom. He, he acted with uh, Robin Williams. You know, Robin Williams was on his show. It was amazing. And, and I remember telling Jimmy Brogan one time, I go, hey, Jimmy, they, they moved me up in my acting class from whatever, like a Monday night to a Wednesday night. I'm, 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 I'm going to be in the master class. But, what, but I still felt a little, like, naive about it but a little bit skeptical and he's kind of broke it down. He's like, he's like, you know what? It's, you know what? Maybe you are a good actor and that's why they did it. But maybe they just, they need to open up that chair in the Monday night class. So they're, sh they're shuffling people to come over to the Wednesday class. Right. It was like a light went on. I was like, you're right. You know? Yeah. You know, uh, he, he got real lucky. He, he, he got picked to be the weatherman. Oh, that's, oh no. Fritz, that's Fritz Coleman. They look alike. Fritz Coleman got to be the weatherman. They, they saw him at the comedy store like when he was like 10 years wow. old or something. And he's been the weatherman ever since. Wow. He's actually, he's actually decomposing right in front of your very eyes while he's giving <laughs> you the weather. <laughs> yeah, he, he's been there forever. Dude, he's been a weatherman. He's been a weatherman. I remember when I moved to L.A., he was the weatherman back in the 90s. I mean, that guy... I think they give the weatherman too much credit here in Los Angeles. So you and I could do the weather. You know, yeah. it's going to be sunny today and warm. That's yeah. all you need to know. Yeah, you, you realize like, oh, chance of cloudy, chance of rain, a partly chance of, you know, and other than that, it's going to be, it's going to be sunny. And then they want to add, just to make it exciting, they want to add the valleys and the, and the high desert and the, and the big bear and all these other places that nobody cares about, you know, <laughs> just, just to make the newscast a little bit longer, you know. You know, who cares about the valleys in the in, 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 in the inland in the empire and, and Big Bear and, and, and you know, I don't care. I'm not going out there. Do I look like a chipmunk? Do I look like a bear? <laughs> and people will just Google it anyways, right? You you, you saw the the weather and you literally will just Google your phone. What's the what's the hourly weather? And then you go outside. I mean, you can just go outside. You don't even really need the weather. By the way, when I was in Fresno, not to knock them down, but. Uh, I was watching the local weatherman, and he's a pretty big guy, and he actually covers half the map when he's on the television, and he's pointing. He's covering up the whole city when he's, like, pointing on it. I'm like, it ain't like L.A. where they got, like, the, the yeah, skinny little weather girl, you know? His big, fat, sweaty fingers pressing the little buttons that he can't, and he's pressing them all at the same time, so you get in the wind direction and the high tide all in the same shot because his sweaty, fatty hands and thing is they can't individually touch the buttons like they should but um i think you come in and out i guess it's varying degrees of reception i hope that doesn't interfere with the finished product no it sounded pretty good so far um let me ask you a couple of weather things before we go do you have any idea um to tell when there's going to be thunder and lightning like when you hear thunder you hear the thunder clap pow do you know how soon the lightning will hit? Do you, in, do you realize? No, first the lightning comes. Yeah, first oh. the lightning comes, and then you count 1, 1,000, 2, yeah. 1,000, 3, 1,000, and then you can see how far away the thunder is or close the lightning is regardless of the baromic pressure. If you're close to the ocean, you're going to get ocean baromic pressure. If you're in the foothills and the mountains, you're going to get baromic pressures. If you divide these pressures in half, add the distance from the ocean to the mountains, divided by your altitude, you'll get the distance between the lightning and the thunder. It's very easy, Darren. 
That's right. You're supposed to count, right? And then the, the, the shorter that, that's the closer the lightning is, you better get out of the way. Well, you should, especially if you're standing next to somebody who's got a, a metal paw. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, Holtzman, it was great having you on. I'll see you tomorrow, and uh, we'll keep in so touch. When are you going to put this out? When are you going to put this out? Uh, this will go out by Wednesday for sure, 100% Wednesday. It may go out sooner, but uh, – And how, do you, how are people going to see it? They're going to go on Zoom? No, they're going to go on YouTube. They're going to go on YouTube. Oh, so you're going to put it on YouTube. There, there you go, go again, YouTube. The video will be on YouTube, and the audio will be on YouTube, and then the audio will also be on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, all those places. Wow. Very good. Good. All right. Well, if people want to see you on Instagram, what's your Instagram handle? Uh, Brian Holtzman, at Brian Holtzman. All right. Well, we'll see you later, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every time you talk, your, your nickname cup comes up on the screen. I'm like, what is that? Like, that's a nickname. But, um. All right, yeah. well, well, buddy, <laughs> uh, I will say adios to you. Okay, thank you. Vaya con Dios. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye-bye now, Darren. Thank you. Appreciate it. Stay, stay healthy. You got it. Thank you. So when my son was about 10 years old, I remember he came into the kitchen and he goes, Hey, Mom, how many pounds do you weigh? And she goes, You never ask a woman how many pounds. And he thought about it and he goes, how many tons? <laughs> I said, this kid's funny. I gotta write that down. Anyways, I'm gonna write some more jokes down. And while I'm doing that, you guys click one of these bubbles and watch another one of my videos. And thanks again for subscribing. Thank you. Pocket party.